seal tonight, and then we, we may read some in that parenthetical chapter number seven without preaching to you. And uh, if, you, if you're up to speed, someone's been asking me for notes. Well, I've got some notes, and I don't have some notes, because some of this I've made notes on, and some of it I haven't made notes on. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. But anyway, I'll try to get something together so you can have notes on what, uh, what we've been studying. Uh, but these, I, I was talking to Brother West there a minute ago, as, as we've said in the beginning of this, uh, the Revelation is not a dark book, as some would say. It's a dark, hard book. It's not, and, and we've discussed that. Uh, but it's a book that if we take it as for what it is, and we, we uh, take it and, and we don't try to spiritualize, or you know, we, we make it as practical as we can, and, and we take it as literal as we can, uh, just understanding the time period when things are going on is sometimes the easiest way to understand what's going on in the book of Revelation. Now, as we have passed the rapture of the church in chapter number, uh, somewhere between chapter 3 and 4 is the rapture of the church has taken place, and we begin to tell you how that there's two things going on. We're, there, we're going on in heaven up here with the Lord, and, but the earth is still going on down here, yet we're not, we're not in the world. We're not present in the world. The Spirit of God has been lifted, and uh, 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 the world is full of chaos. And, you know, as we said uh, last time, the first three and a half years, are, the man of sin is going to come on, and the, uh, the Antichrist is going to come on the scene, the man of peace, and he's going to stand, and he's got all the answers to all of man's problems. Uh, I've been thinking about this mess going on in Washington. It, and, and, you know, if we hit that debt ceiling, and uh, this is not politics, this is just some things I've been thinking about. It, if we hit that debt ceiling and we default, now we're not going to default. We, we got enough money coming in to pay our bills, but that's the big, you know, that's the big thing that they're saying. Uh, then if we hit that debt ceiling where we can't borrow enough money to pay the interest on what we've already borrowed and spent, and so, like I say, I'm not going to get into that. It makes me too mad. Uh, but you can't keep spending what you ain't got. But anyway, uh, if we do that, then you know what? I've heard people after people this week, this week say what chaos uh, that it's going to cause the world economy. Uh, the markets react up and down to what the, you know, what government's saying. The markets have been up and down this week. But when they, if they think they've got a deal, then the markets go up. If they talk negative about it, the markets go down. But I heard someone say because we are the largest economy in the world and the, have the most, you know, uh, have the most of whatever there is to have about it, that if our if our debt ceiling is reached, that it will cause a re worldwide recession. Now I don't know if it will, but that's what I've been listening to and what I've been hearing. Now if that happens, you talking about chaos worse than we've ever seen it will be when that happens. Now, do I hope it happens or not? I don't know. I'm just, God knows what he's doing with it, so I'm not concerned about it, to be perfectly honest with you. But I'll tell you something, that only leads me to believe that we're that much closer to the coming of the Lord. Because it, we are prime, we are, this world is prime for someone to stand up and say, I've got the answers. I know what's, you know, I've got the answers. I can bring peace. I've got financial, I can bring financial stability. We can, we, instead of having all these countries with all this money that they're trying to spend on their own, we can have a one-world government. We can have a one-world monetary system. And all that can be put in place in just no time by one man standing in, and people, and people will believe him. Of course, they'll believe him. Is he alive in the world today? Yeah, I believe he is alive in the world today. And uh, because I believe, the reason I believe that is because I believe we're that near to the coming of the Son of God. Amen, I believe that. And so the rapture takes place, and we're in heaven, and the, the things are still going on on this earth. Three and a half years of peace, and then, uh, and then things get rough. Uh, worse than anything you and I can imagine. The devil is totally let loose on the earth, because when the church leaves, so does the Spirit of God goes away. And when the Spirit of God, see... Uh, when it leaves, then then the devil, being the the prince of, of the you know of the hour, of the air around us, and he's got all that power, then he's going to displace it upon the earth, and it's going to get wicked, it's going to get ugly, it's going to get mean. But Amen. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. 
And so people are going to be lulled kind of, kind of to sleep and thinking everything's going fine. To burn. I mean, it's going to be bad enough even at that. But then when three and a half years are gone, then the Antichrist is going to come in his full fury against, against the people of the earth, against the, uh, God's chosen people, the Jews especially. And it's going to be total chaos upon this earth. Now, uh, last time we were here, we discussed the first four seals of Revelation chapter number 6, the horses, uh, the horse seals. And, and the, uh, the first one was the white horse. Uh, that being, we believe, the Antichrist. I'll get some disagreement on that. I've read all kinds of answers, but I believe that to be the Antichrist because he is coming on a white horse likened to Christ. He's going to be the man of sin. He's going to set up peace uh, on the earth. And he, here he comes. And then uh, the, the red horse, and he's going he's gonna to kill. And then the black horse is going to cause, you know, is, is going to cause a, a great famine. And then the, the, the uh, uh, where am I at here? Yeah. The pale horse is going to be the horse of death. And so all these things are going to take place. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. I'm just telling you. As we discussed that, I'm glad I'm not going to be here because I'm going to be with the Lord. While, I think, while we're in heaven, believe me, people that's lost without God are going to be down here. Now, I was asked the question, will people be saved after the, after the rapture? There will be folks to be saved after the rapture. But it won't be people that have heard the gospel down here on the, in this earth. This is the time. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. And people that have heard the gospel and understand the gospel are not going to have uh, an, uh, another opportunity to be saved because uh, uh, Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came for his, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, start, to start a church and to have a church, which is the bride of Christ. And when he went away, when that bride is finished, the last person saved, the bride will be complete. So there'll be no one else added to the bride of Christ. We'll be, you know, we'll be uh, saved and out of here. And those that have heard the gospel can only regret that they didn't accept the Lord. And that's a, that's a terrible thing. But people that have heard, there's people sitting in our church in the last six months and uh, have admitted, no, no one's here tonight, so I'd say this, have admitted they were lost. And they've had their opportunity. The, those folks that have that opportunity now will never have that opportunity again after the church is raptured out. So who's going to be saved? Uh, mostly Jews are going to be saved during the, during the, will there be people that have not heard the gospel? Uh, I'll get some disagreement probably with this, but if they've not heard and the gospel of the kingdom is preached, that John was preaching, uh, then I believe there's possibility for those to get saved, but it won't be people that have heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, as we, as we studied that last week, let's look at verse number nine, and I'm going to give you these things quickly because uh, chapter number seven is that parenthetical chapter that talks about the, uh, speaks about the uh, 144,000 uh, uh, Jews that are, that are uh, called and that are chosen and that God puts his protective hand about <clears throat> and it talks about the saved of the tribulation. <coughs> so verse number nine, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, how holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Who are these? Uh, who are these that are under the altar of sacrifice? Who are these that are, uh, that are, are laying there, uh, the souls of these men? Who are these people? Well, let's read on. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was uh, said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I believe these to be the ones that die of martyrdom, uh, those that, that, are, that are martyred for their belief and for not bowing, uh, you know, to the Antichrist. So they're, uh, they're there around that altar just waiting the day when... Uh, the rest of that will be fulfilled and uh, there'll be more even killed but there's, there's uh, untold numbers of people at that altar that altar that they have actually they have given their life for the cause uh, of their belief and for their faith and listen friend I don't know how far this world's going to go uh, before the church is called out 
And, you know, I don't know that it might not come a place in our time, in our life, when they might come to us, when someone might come to us and say, you deny your faith in Christ or we're going we're gonna to string you up. Now, we're going to put you on it. You say, now, wait a minute, preacher. We're too good for that. No, we're not. We're not too good for that, and we're not beyond that. And uh, the, the way the world has, we talk about that in the, in the uh, men's class tonight, in the discipleship class, this world uses the term Christian so lightly today that, that if you don't, you know, if people that name the name of Christ many times don't even know what that means. They, they think, well, I'm not a Muslim or I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not something else. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not an atheist. So I must be a Christian. And believe me, that's the way people think. And they have no idea what, you know, a lot of people have no idea what even Christian means. But when it comes down to the nitty-gritty and, and someone comes to you, and maybe they've come to someone that has no idea, and they say to them, you denounce being a Christian or we're going we're to take your life. And they might do that. But when they come to someone such as you and I, God helping us to have the courage and God giving us the grace when they say that to us, that we'll say, no, we'll not deny Jesus. Amen? I don't know if that might not come in my lifetime. And I don't scare nobody tonight, but I'm not so sure that that might not come in my lifetime in this country where we, we'll, take a, you know, we'll take a chance with our own life if we stand for the cause of Christ. But God helping me, I want to do that. And you know who they're going to come to first like they did in the early, uh, early church? They came after the preachers first. And that's what they're going to come after. They're going to come after the preacher. Brother West, I know him well. We've been friends for many years. And I know Brother West would stand in that day if it come to him and say, I'll not deny my Savior. Amen, brother. And God helping me and giving me the grace and giving me the strength, I, I want to be able to say, I'll not deny my Savior because of what he's done for me. So it's not impossible for uh, martyrdom to come, you know, come to our lifetime. How would you stand? What would you do? What would you do? Would you stand for the Lord? Would you... Uh, would, you, would you say, by the help of God, I'm not going to deny him because of what he's done for me? God help us that we be there. But these souls that are around that altar are those that have died as martyrs uh, during, this, during this tribulation time. Now, some people link all the martyrs that have, uh, that have died, but I, don't, I believe that they came with the bride of Christ. I believe that they're already there. I believe these around the altar are those that die under these horsemen that we have told you about, and they die and give their, give their lives and they're crying for vengeance. They're put on, they're placed on, on each one of them. They're given a, a robe. And it was said unto them that they should rest for yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So when all that's done, uh, remember God's going to take care of the whole mess. Don't ever forget all of this. All this chaos going on in the world now and all the chaos that's going to go on during the tribulation period God has it all under control, and he's going to, he, he will in the very end, God will set it all right, and he'll not use a, a, a you know, two million men army to do it, although he will, because we'll be with him, but I want to tell you something, what he's going to do with his word, he's going to speak peace, and with his word, he's going to rage war, and God's, God knows all about what's going on, so we should not sit around and wring our hands, and because God's not, amen, we trust him. To know that he's doing right and everything he does is right and he's never done anything wrong. And so when, when uh, it comes time for us to stand for our faith, if it happens before the Lord comes, God help us to stand right and stand for our faith in our, in our, uh, and put our trust uh, told in him uh, that he might lead us. And then we come to this uh, sixth seal. Now this is a, a very moving scripture. Now here's where people want to start you know, they, they, people start spiritualizing uh, way back in the book of Revelation, but here's where people really want to start spiritualizing the scripture. They, they want to try to, and I've read after many, many authors in, in my studies, and a big percentage of them want to start, well, it doesn't really mean this. I believe the word of God says what it means and means what it says. And in, particularly in the book of Revelation where we understand just take it for what it says and believe what it says, without trying to spiritualize. So here we find this. And I beheld when he had opened <coughs> the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, 
of hair, and the moon became as blood. Now, how could it be an earthquake that would cause all of that? How could that happen? Well, uh, we've seen earthquakes, and we've seen, it, we, I remember back in, uh, when the Twin Towers collapsed, and I, I vividly remember that picture over and over and over in my mind. About all, and I, I was, one thing that caught my eye was all the dust that arose from that, those buildings falling. Right there, just that one instant, all that dust that rose from that, uh, that one building. We hear volcanoes that spew ash and, and cover the clouds, and it, it gets dark because of all the ash that, that's in the air. Now, now, God made this world. He's the one that put this world together. And one of these days, God's going to shake this world. And, and when God shakes this world with a great earthquake, the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became his blood. I was reading in the, uh, and some people use this, and I don't particularly, I believe, I believe God just does it in his own hand. But anyway, uh, I was reading about the, the uh, two uh, atom bombs that were dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And as, as they were dropped, uh, when they hit the ground, they caused such a cloud that for days the sun couldn't be seen and the, and the, and the moon looked as red blood around that. So see, when something like that happens, it causes a chaos and it causes a, 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 a turmoil of the elements that all this dust rises. Now, if God takes that earth, he's going to shake it such as we've never seen. We felt a few tremors around here before. I've heard people talking about it rattling the, the, uh, the glasses or the pictures on the window. But when God gets and shakes this world, friend, it's going to be an earthquake like we've never known. See, he made it. And all he has to do is, is put his hand on it and shake it, and it's going to be something this world has never seen or never known. Now, you think about what I just said. If God shakes the earth and, and buildings around this world collapse and fall to the ground, the dust arising from them would cause the sun to be black, and it would cause the night at the moon. You look through it and can see the moon. It would be red as blood. How many of you have ever seen a red moon? Have you ever seen a red moon through the smog? Man, it's, a, it, it, it's an eerie-looking thing, isn't it? But that's what's going to happen, and it's going to appear that way to everybody. Everybody's going to, and, and the terror of it all. And yet people's going to, uh, you know, people's going to think nothing of it. They're going to be fearful, and they're going to be terrified, but they're not going to call on God. Uh, you say, well, if, I was, if I'm alive now and I know what I know now and I, and I wasn't saved when I got to uh, the tribulation, I'd call on God and get saved because I would know what's going on. The Bible says that those would be, that those would, would be sent a strong delusion that if, that if it were possible, even the very elect of God, even very saved people, if you were there, would be deceived by it. So uh, people are not going to believe. They're going to be uh, sent a, a, a great delusion and they're not going to believe. So the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. The earth is shaken. Now, preacher, do you really believe the stars from the heavens are going to fall to the earth? Well, yeah. You know why? Because that's what the Bible says. Now, will it, will it be the... Mass planets that are hit. The Bible says the stars of the heaven will fall to the earth. Will it? I don't know. The Bible says it will be the stars of heaven that fall from the earth. Will it be a cat catastrophic that all the stars of heaven just plummet to the earth? The Bible says as a fig, a, a, a cast their untimely figs, the planets, of, the stars of heaven are going to be cast to the earth. Now, I've went out at night and I've saw meteor showers i love to do that that's one of my favorite things to do did that on vacation got up in the middle of the night and went out and sat on the uh, sat on out there on the beach and looked up at the sky and watched the meteor showers it just amazes me how those things shoot shooting stars how they just you know what they're doing they're falling to the earth but they're little bitty things and and they burn up before they ever hit there sometimes one hits and when it does it usually causes a great commotion but imagine the stars of the heaven falling from the skies upon planet earth such catastrophe could only add to the earthquake. Such disaster could only add to that. And, and I believe that because that's what the, the Bible says. So as a, as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, 
And the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. God's going to shake the earth. The stars of heaven are going to fall to the earth. And, and, and the mountains are going to be moved. The, the, the continents are going to shift about as a, as a result of the, of, of the stars falling from heaven. And as a great earthquake, the, the continents are going, to, are, are going to sift about. Now, there's people who will, 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 I may get phone calls even. I may be getting messages. They say, preacher, you're crazy. None of this can happen. Well, if I believe the Bible in which I do, then I, how can I take it any different from, from what it says? And that's exactly what I do. So I believe the, the, as the heaven departed and as a mighty scroll, and when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, listen, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. What are they trying to do? And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. They got the message, didn't they? They might have not got it down here when they had an opportunity, but boy, they've got the message now. They said, Hide us from the wrath of the one that sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And friend, that, this is going to take place. Just as surely as I stand before you tonight, uh, this is going to take place. And this world is going to rock and reel, and, and uh, the, the earth is going to, the sun's going to be black as sackcloth, and the moon is going to be red as blood. And I believe that according to the scripture. So I make up nothing when I tell you this. This is just what the Word of God says. And I happen to believe the Word of God. Amen. I am a Bible believer, and I do believe the Word of God. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath is coming. Who shall be able to stand? Nobody will be able to stand in that day. And friend, it's a horrible thing. It's a terrible thing that's going to take place. But it's going to happen. Remember, while we're here in heaven with the, with the Lord, the tribulation is going on down here on earth. And friend, if you've got loved ones that's lost, then today's the day to tell them that they don't want to go there. I've had people ask me even, why do you even worry about what's going to happen when you're not here? Well, it's because I want, there, there are people that want to know. There are people that need to know. And there's pit, lost people are, will ask me sometimes, what is this tribulation all about? Then it's our golden opportunity to witness to them about the things of God. Amen. All right, this next chapter con, concerns the, uh, those that are saved during the tribulation. And there are, uh, there are 144,000 <coughs> that are sealed to preach the gospel of the kingdom. So you read the chapter, and I'm not going any further tonight. <coughs> so you read the chapter, and we'll get back to it on Wednesday night. And there's, uh, out, of every, out of every tribe, there's, there's uh, 12,000 sealed out of every tribe, uh, of the 12 tribes, so that makes 144,000. Sometimes the Jehovah's Witness will tell you that they're part of that 144,000. If they ever do that, just ask them how many Jehovah's Witnesses are there. Well, there's millions. Then they say, well, how do you know you're part of that? That stumps them up so bad they'll usually leave you alone. Uh, they'll try to go figure that one out. But anyway, uh, those 144,000 will be sealed to preach the gospel and everything going on, uh, they'll be called of God and everything that goes on will not affect them. They'll be able to preach the word of God unhindered, uh, the gospel of the kingdom, the, uh, the, the gospel that John preached uh, when he preached Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They'll preach that gospel. The gospel of salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ it will not be the gospel of that day. It'll be the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. All right, anyone got anything now? I told you I'd be short tonight, and I am. Amen. Well, I'm not short. Amen. <clears throat>